Hello and welcome to Chapter 10 of AP Statistics, comparing two populations or groups. And there are two sections of this chapter, and 10.1 we'll be looking at comparing two proportions. In the section we'll be able to describe the shape of the distribution, and whether it's normal, uh, the center, and the spread of the distribution. So we'll be looking at uh, different types of uh, standard deviation and our problems. So uh, we'll also be able to determine what the conditions are met for doing inference. That's our SIN, our SRS, independence and normality. We're going to construct and interpret a confidence interval. So this will relate to this material that we learned back in Chapter 8. And we should be able to perform a significance test, which will relate to our material back in Chapter 9. Except now we'll be doing it on two proportions. So suppose we want to compare the proportions of individuals with a certain characteristic in population 1 and population 2. Well, we'll simply call, call those parameters P1 and P2. The ideal strategy is to take a separate random sample from each population and to compare the sample proportions with that characteristic. This is a little different than the matched pairs t-test that we did back in chapter 9 uh, where we were having uh, the same individual perform two different tasks and comparing the difference in those tasks. We've got two completely different populations that we're comparing. So what if we want to compare the effectiveness of treatment 1 and treatment 2 in a completely randomized experiment? This time the parameters P1 and P2 that we want to compare are the true proportions of successful outcomes for each treatment. We use the proportions of successes of the two treatment groups to make the comparison. So we can make making sure we understand parameters. Statistics will have the hat and our sample size uh, for each of the different populations as well too. So to explore the sampling distribution of the difference between two proportions, let's start with two populations having a known proportion of success. For whatever reason, we know that at school one, that 70% of students did their homework last night. That's going to be our P1. At school two, 50% of students did their homework last night. That's our P2. These are known parameters. So, suppose the counselor at school one takes an SRS of 100 students. So we'll have a sample size of 100. So that's sample size from sample uh, uh, from school one. School two's counselor takes an SRS of 200 students. So that's our sample size from school two uh, is 200. What can we say about the difference? The, the difference in the proportions in that sample. Well, the FAM software is a computer software that we could use to generate data. Um, and what they did is they generated a simple random sample 100 students from school 1 and a separate simple random sample 200 students from school 2. Then the difference in the sample portions was then calculated and plotted. And they repeated this 1,000 times. So this is the SRS of 100. This is the SRS of 200. Uh, they would have found the difference between these two. And that's just one of the dots in this in this group here. So they did this a thousand times and then plotted those dots here. And down below uh, we could see that our uh, center of the distribution is at 0 0.70, which we would have expected. Our center of the distribution 2 is at 0 0.5. And it looks like from our previous knowledge on how to find the, uh, the mean uh, of a uh, difference is just to subtract the two. Here again, now we can find the spread, the standard deviation of this one. And that's just our P1 times our Q1 divided by N1 square rooted. And that's how they calculated this. Same thing with this, but now we remember we can't subtract. We can't subtract standard deviations. Uh, and uh, we'll look at how we get that value right there using a formula. It'll be similar and look similar to what we've done in the past. So if we look at the shape, Shape is uh, still approximately normal. Uh, the center we discussed on how the difference there would be, uh, just the difference between the two. 
and the spread we'll talk a little bit more in the next couple slides. So both p hat 1 and p hat 2 are random variables. The statistic of the difference of these two random variables. In chapter 6 we learned that for any two independent random variables x and y, that if you want to find the mean of the difference, you could just subtract the each individual means to get that. But we couldn't calculate standard deviation because we can't add or subtract standard deviations. We can add or subtract variances, which is why we have variance here. So we could find the difference in the variances. But remember, when we found the difference of the, uh, of the variance, we had to actually add the variance uh, of each of those different distributions. And then if we wanted to get the standard deviation of that difference, you'd have to square root that standard or that variance uh, of the x's plus the variance of the y's. So <coughs> the shape of the distribution will be approximately normal if we can show that the n1 times the p1, the n1 times the q1, the n2 times the p2, and the n2 times the q2 are all at least 10. Uh, so this would be in that second box in the n part. Uh, we can show up each one of these. All four of these are all greater than or equal to 10. That n1, p1, uh, n1, q1, and then the n2, uh, oops, sorry, the n2, uh, p2, and the n2, q2 are all greater than 10. All four of those have to be shown. The center is, is just the difference between the two. And the spread goes back to the idea up here again uh, that we would have to add and then square root those variances uh, to get the standard deviation of the difference. And again, uh, we'd have to make sure we satisfy that 10% condition, uh, that 10 times our first sample uh, is greater than, oops, I'm sorry, is less than or equal to our uh, population. And also that we have to show that 10 times n sub 2 is less than or equal to our population. So then there's our distribution or, or, or our sampling distribution of the difference of the two, mean difference, and then again we used, uh, and here we use the q1 or q2 here. So, suppose that there are two large high schools, each with more than 2,000 students. So again, the populations are more than 2,000 students. At school, 170%, so there's our P1. Uh, students did their homework last night, only 50% of students at school 2, there's our P2, did their homework last night. School 1 takes an SRS of 100, so there's our sample size for school 1. In school two, we did a simple random sample of 200. So there's our sample size for school two. So if we can describe the shape, center, and spread of the sampling distribution, what we could do is go through and test this. We take our N1 times P1. There is our work to show and our final answer. Again, make sure you are showing this work too in that final answer, working it to the end. Um, calculate that for the N1, Q1, the N2, Q, P2, and the N2, Q2, oops, and uh, what we notice is they are all at least 10. They're all bigger than or greater than or equal to 10, so thus we've established normality. Okay. So there's our shape, our center is just the difference between those two proportions. And our standard deviation is calculated. You notice we use the P's. Uh, because we knew what these p's were. There was some data that we had calculated or was given to us before. Uh, so we got that as our standard deviation. So we would have a normal distribution of these differences and our center would be at 0 0.20 with our standard deviation being 0 0.058. Then we can find probabilities underneath that normal curve. So we move into confidence intervals. So again, reflecting back to chapter 8 and how we calculated confidence intervals, we always had our statistic. Okay? In this case, it's going to be our p hat 1 minus our p hat 2, and then plus or minus our critical value. 
Uh, so remember our z star, we'll look at common z stars here in a few minutes, uh, times that standard deviation of the statistic. So again, times that, uh, uh, that standard deviation of the statistic, and this should come up here next here. So um, again, this is our standard deviation uh, of our statistic that we could use right there. Um, if we are given the P1, if we're given those proportions of the uh, population, those population proportions, we use those. Otherwise, uh, we might have to use, instead of the standard deviation, we have to use the standard error if we're not given those uh, when we're testing and use a P hat and Q hat. Okay, so uh, we're going to look for uh, those critical values, Z stars, for given confidence levels in the standard rule curve. And many of you might remember, again, that the 90% confidence uh, level gives us a Z score of about 1.645. 95% uh, gave us a 1.96, 99% uh, gave us a 2.575. Uh, we can certainly review this individually and how those were calculated, uh, but in general, remember they were on the normal curve. If I was calculating a 90%, I want that middle part, to, this middle part here to be 90%, which means I got 0 0.05 in each tail. So you'd be looking at that 0 0.05 in the heart of the chart, and you would see that that's about negative 1.645, and because the, the distribution is symmetric, this would be 1.645. So you could use either one of those as a z-score, either the positive or the negative. So, and again, if we're looking at box two in our um, uh, uh, four-step process, again, want to make sure that we do have random samples for each of the two, or at the very least, that we have a randomized experiment that the um, treatments were assigned randomly. Still want our 10% rule for independence, and then again we'd have the n, all the n times p's and all the n times q's being greater than or equal to 10 to establish uh, normality. All right. And again, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we don't know the values of the true parameters, so we'll replace those uh, with a p hat and a q hats when we don't know those. And again, it won't be called standard deviation at that point. It would be actually called standard error. Okay. So when those conditions are met, an approximate c percent confidence interval, so whatever confidence level you set, would follow this procedure as we kind of outlined before. So the difference in our uh, sample portions, our Z stars, which we talked about uh, before, and we're using their standard error to calculate them. All right, well, we're going to stop right here for the first day. And uh, at this point, uh, you should be able to do these problems right here, uh, day one and day two. Um, basically doing numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Uh, we'll come back and finish section 10.1 uh, and look at how to do a significance test uh, using p-values. All right, well, wish you good luck, and we'll see you on the flip side.